Mr. Don. What's up, Cycle Fam? Mr. Don the Cyclist. We are back with another video. I got race footage for y'all. But before we get into it, remember to hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. Let's get on the algorithm train. I'm so glad the race season has started. I've been dying to race my bike and get things going. And also all my training that I've been putting in, I just wanted to see where I landed and where I was at. So we knocked off the dust on this road race. Following this race highlight, we'll be doing a lot of skipping through because I just don't want to bore you guys. It's a road race, not a crit. So we'll be skipping through a lot, but what I'll be doing is posting the whole video following this one so you can see the full footage of the race. It's going to be the last two laps of the four going into the left turn for the sprint. But let's get into it. I'm not gonna talk your heads off. All right, so we got two laps to go. We're about to take this right-hand turn. This is the start finish for the lap, but really we had a lead in, a neutral lead in going into the, going into the 11 mile loops. And once we take this right hand turn, there's this real steady riser. We hit it different every time. And you see on the last lap, it kind of took a little bit more energy to catch up to the group because that's when the pace picked up. The group was all back together. The reason why I'm not, I'm just gonna give you an overview of the first two laps. First two laps, like our goal was to get Chris, one of our guys, in the breakaway. It went early. It went very early in the race. Uh, we kept him away. It was him and another NGA rider. Kept him away for about almost two and a half laps before they were bought back. This course is very hard to send guys off uh, in the breakaway. You have to do it at the right time and you have to be really, 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 really committed. With these four long corners and the court, being predominantly flat it's hard to keep a breakaway out of sight and usually when the peloton sees that the breakaway is not out of sight they have a good time gap but when they're not out of sight there's some motivation and there's only but so much as teams or big teams uh which the big teams represented out there was us mac racing which were in the yellow and black kit and nga nga is in the red kit it's hard to manage and keep the peloton at bay especially when positions can be shuffled in corners and also there were certain parts of the road where it goes from narrow to a little bit wider and there was nothing we can really do to keep those guys away long enough especially with it going off with it happening so early so that was the first break and then there was a second break that formed it was two nga guys one solo guy and our guy Mike, as you can see, Mike is right here in the blue, blue uh, specialized with the blue helmet. Uh, he was able to get into that break. He did a lot of work earlier to help the first break. So when he got into that second break, he didn't really quite have it to kind of commit to those guys when they went out there. So eventually Mike came back, but it was in good favor because of this one solo guy, which he actually posted his YouTube video and he, he said it. he overcooked that corner. Uh, we got one of these corners that is more than a 90 degree turn. I would say it's about 60 degrees maybe. It's a 60 degree turn, so it kind of turns back on you a little bit. And he overcooked that corner that left two NGA guys. Those guys were just like, all right, well, that break is done. So that break came back. And I believe there was another break that did try to go off, I would say, towards the third, end of the third lap, fourth lap. But nothing really happened there uh one of our guys brandon who's up front manning the front he stayed on the front for three laps of this race and control pace we we start calling i'm i'm calling him wild bernard because <laughs> the amount of grit the amount of uh I, I can't even really put it in words but he just put a lot of it on the road that day and he made it easy for the sprinters to sit in communicate manage how many guys are moving forward and just staying rested. And that's basically what I did in this race. I didn't have to do too much work. As you can see, my heart rate right now is 153. I, I just stay protected besides uh, the points in the race where you do have the gradient pitch up a little bit. And of course you have to do a little work and just manage to keep your position. And really with road races, you will see that most of the energy that you spend is keeping your position not losing your position, going into the corners and having to deal with the surge. Because the front group, if you're like the first five to six positions in the front, you can take corners a lot easier. It's a lot smoother race for you versus any positions behind that 10 spots back. You're putting in more work to turn out of corners 
it could be a lot and sometimes guys can get popped off of that just being in the wrong position because if you really think about it road races are nothing but a fast group ride without stops without stop lights uninterrupted so if you can keep a consistent effort be in the same and be in the right positions then you're good to go but spoiler if you follow my instagram i did post a sprint finish on my instagram and it's also on the mac racing page a lot of controversy with that it was a mess but we'll get into that but if you've already watched it you've already seen the spoiler on how that has went down but man <laughs> was it a, a fiasco but yeah uh yellow line is in effect you, you cannot cross the yellow line the officials will pull you back if you try to advance on the yellow line and that's with all road races in georgia at least i know in a lot of other states it's like that as well but you can't advance on the yellow line now if you're caught in a situation where you're pushed out and you're you're pushing out just to be safe then the official won't pull you back you may beep his horn and be like you know get back in uh but you won't be pulled back but there was a couple guys that did get pulled back first two laps trying to make advances uh also the juniors this year i gotta take my hat off to you guys you guys are coming in steamrolling uh i guess you guys kind of remember that a lot of you got beat up on last year and now you guys are beating up on us with the young legs it's cool we'll be back but this is the kicker that i was talking you got talking to you guys about so you have one you have one climb here and we're going into the second turn right now which I'm going to be honest, guys, I didn't take this turn well. I just didn't want anyone coming up from under me or trying to, I guess, dive bomb. So I took all these corners wide. And I felt like the wide corner was the safest turn to stay out of trouble. So with that, I always had to do like a, a good effort to get back on. And the only reason why I did it that way is because I know so most of these climbs reward you with a downhill immediately, which is also why it was hard for breakaways to get away on their own. I feel like... To be in a breakaway, you need dominant teams that has numbers on this course. And if you're a solo rider, take advantage of that to sneak in those breakaways because the dominant teams will set that up for this course. But this is one of the climbs. Uh, no one really attacked on this climb. Uh, it pitches up to about 11%. This climb didn't bother me at all, actually. I was able to manage this one like i said I, I like kickers kickers are cool uh and i like i said i knew that right after this kicker and you put in this crazy effort there's a downhill immediately and i think that's the reason why we didn't have a lot of attacks on this hill because it's a kicker and immediately there's a downhill so it was hard for anyone who wanted to break away to attack on that hill when you have the peloton speeding down to catch up to you on a grade that's like negative third was that negative three percent so and then also like my fitness my heart rate right now so last year i was able to max out at almost 204 beats per minute right now i, I haven't been pushed to that extreme point yet so we're still trying to figure out that's going to be my high heart rate right now but my max heart rate was about 194 196 so when i'm at 187 i'm hurting i would like to say i'm hurting but it's not like unmanageable pain it almost feels close to threshold my threshold power my threshold heart rate right now is about 179 180 ish so if you see my heart rate up that high beyond 180 something you just know donovan might be hurting a little bit <laughs> but I managed my effort very well in this race. Uh, my power, I kept it really low. So it's 196 on average, which is not a lot at all when you do crit races, in my opinion, more. And everyone in the front group was just putting a lot of work. As you can see, John, John right there in the white socks, uh, small guy up front, uh, great sprinter. You're not gonna get a draft off of him. So that makes him so deadly. Sorry, John, if I had <laughs> put your secret out there, but it makes him a deadly rider. As you see, these are the NGA guys right beside us too, as well. Oh, and in Project 11, I believe, and I could be, I could have that name wrong. I don't have my notes in front of me, but I believe that's Project 11 in the blue and black kit. Uh, I want to say they had about three guys out there as well. 
I know they like to get into breakaway too, but the race was controlled by us and NGA so much. I don't think like other small teams with teams with smaller numbers were even able to get in certain breaks or even get involved because we just we kept it so tight. And the reason why the race only averaged 24 miles is because the first two laps we basically kept it slow, uh, trying to get the breakaway to go away until solar riders were able to kind of come around shuffle up to the front and really pull to try and pull our guys back which like i said they eventually did so another thing that was kind of messed up for me in this race is i don't know if you guys watched my other previous video which i'll post here it was my review on my system six and i talked about my bike fit and i felt like my fit could have been off because i had an issue with my leg kind of like going to sleep waking up not really I did a ride this past weekend, really cold conditions, and this race was also in cold conditions too, but not as cold, but the wind kind of adds this like extra element of chill. And I have, I do have a basketball injury. I had surgery on it as well. And with that happening, arthritis has kind of set in over the years. And it kind of didn't dawn on me a little bit, but I was just wondering like, why is it only happening to this leg? And in this race, like a couple times you might see, I can't tell from the camera, but I unclip, kind of like shake my leg a little bit, kind of wake it back up and then clip back in. But it's only happens in cold conditions. Cold conditions only. It starts off with this like little tingling pain. And then after that, it's like a numbness a little bit. So I was fighting that a little bit in the race and I was kind of like frustrated with it because in my sprint, towards the end and like it really messed with my sprint. Like I couldn't uh, put the power down the way I wanted to. And like I said, it was a fiasco. Uh, but there were moments that it was just kind of like sleep, wake up, sleep, wake up. Ah, very annoying. But I'm realizing now that cold weather has a negative effect on my knee. <laughs> uh, and theory is that even when I did uh, our fast training ride on Thursday, uh, we have a ride in Atlanta called Thursday Tango. And we averaged about 20 miles that day. The temperature was amazing. I believe it was like 68 degrees, almost, well, actually it was pretty windy. It was pretty windy that day. We were pushing pretty hard in the wind. My knee was fine. Like I had no issues. When I'm on the trainer, same thing, no issues from both bikes, from my CAD and from my System 6. So I know it's not a fit issue, it's a temperature temperature issue. Like, what are the odds of that? Um, but anyways, that was just a little side note as to what I was dealing with in the race, uh, trying to get that figured out. And you'll see even in the full video, I clipped out, tried to clip back in, my foot slipped. And I was like, man, this is, this is horrible. Um, outside of that, I felt great. Fitness felt great. I felt like I managed my, my efficiency and my effort very well. I stayed in the right position most of the race. And also there were times I did find myself kind of like shuffle to the back a little bit, but then I shuffle myself back up to the front. And yeah, I felt great. I felt like most of the corners, I took it well. I stayed out of trouble with any, any you know, danger. What I can say is this group of guys, like this group of guys, I would say raced very well uh, compared to the races I've seen last year. I know a lot of people have been putting a ton of work getting coaches. I have a coach as well, uh, Ty Magner from Legion. We'll get into that. That'll be something for you guys and uh, why it's important, why I feel it's important to have a coach. A lot of these guys are racing their bikes very well. They're, they're stronger than they were last year. I believe that this year the races will be a lot faster and they will be tougher. I feel like the competition, everyone's like elevated their game. All it took was, he got a coach, he got a coach, she got a coach, she got a coach, he got a coach, she got a coach, she got a coach. Now everybody got a coach. <laughs> and some people got nutritionists, like the whole nine yards, like everyone is really investing in themselves and you have no choice but to invest in yourself the same way because you will get left behind. Um, so yeah, I, I have a coach as well and I feel like that, with the training and structure that has helped me a ton. And 
really set me up for some type of success this year. I really feel like I'm racing a better race this year. Like I feel better than I did last year. Uh, last year, I did a lot of just riding my bike, doing a lot of miles, but no real structure. No real structure. And I felt like my body on picked here? up on that immediately. As soon as we I'm got I'm supposed to be talking here, about this race. I'm over here rambling so, about everything else. Really just giving yeah. you guys an update. You're watching it at the same time. So you see what's going on. Uh, we're about to come up to that really uh, hard turn that I was telling you, about, you guys about. Like I said, one guy went down in that turn. Well, two guys went down in that turn. One guy crashed out because he just crashed out and another guy just overcooked it. I didn't see it. I remember at some point in the race, he was tugging on his chain, like he was trying to fix his chain. It was a guy on the side of the road. Yeah, I think he actually got like like snipped uh, by somebody trying to go around. That was a little sketch. I felt like he should have pulled over, like try to get off of the road, especially when we come around that corner. We can take the whole, we can take two lanes up, when you're coming into a corner because you got to go wide. If everyone's trying to squeeze through a corner, within that line catastrophe that's a disaster you you just don't need that and it's funny we have this one line you know one side of the road rule and i've seen races that have you know you could take the whole road and sometimes you have the whole road is still you still have those issues of bottlenecks congestion so sometimes it doesn't really matter chris went off road i don't know chris chris took <laughs> the most interesting option uh, to go around that guy. That guy was popped. I don't know if he was from Cat 5 or if he was in this race. Not sure. Uh, but we're about to come up to that turn. This is where we swing out. Like I said, you guys, you can see I stayed to the plan. Stay on the outside. And right now, I'd say I'm about... How many guys I got in front of me here, guys? Uh, this is what, maybe top, this is top 15 positions. I was just really trying to stay top 10 or top 15 positions in the race to just keep an eye on a lot of things. Like I said, I shuffled to the back a couple times, just like really just getting, I hate to say it, but bored um, and just not, just bored. I, I, I was almost like falling asleep in the race kind of. And the thing is, like I said, the only reason why I was even able to feel that way was because we had, we had so much, uh, presence in this race. Brandon doing a lot of work on the front. Mike was doing a lot of work on the front. John was staying very what he John was staying activated. He made sure he was in those positions because the goal was this. If we brought Chris back, which we did, it was Sprinter's Gambit now. Like this is now a Sprinter's race and we needed to stay fresh to seal the deal. And that was the goal. We knew that we had to get John on that podium and however many B's we get on that podium after that, it's a great story. It's a great story to tell. Uh, as you can see, Chris is back. Chris is back in the, in the, in the fold. And yeah, that is the lap guys. That is the first lap. We're about to come back to that section. Like I said, where we go back into that right turn. So we're going to go ahead and skip ahead. We're going to get to the we're gonna get to the controversy. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna get to the fiasco Run of the whole side. entire race and what you've been waiting for. And I hope you didn't just like skip all the way through. But enough of me rambling. You know, like I said, there's really not much to see here, guys. Like it's a road race. It's very slow as far as like action, things happening real time, strategy happening real time. The whole everything, attacks from lead outs to just everything. Road racing is very slow. It's a it's a chess game, and you have to kind of wait out the whole strategy for you to see the whole thing. Uh, crits, I feel like crits are more of it. It's checkers, man. It's, it's active. Guys just in and out, in and out, in and out. Um, but yeah, let's get to that last lap. All right, so coming into the last lap, we're going back to the lead-in, so we're going reverse, so this will be going back to the start-finish line. I was so upset with myself in this moment because I remember Rome, one of my teammates, he was telling me, he's like, Don, we got to get in position. We got to get in position. I was like, yeah. And Rome was racing for the Masters. So he obviously he needed to get into position as well because he's racing a different race. This race has Masters and Cat 4 racing together. So there's two different races going on in this race. But as we were coming into this left turn, I was like, there are so many bodies in front of me right now. And I know that I have to gain some positions. 
And I know that as a whole, everyone wasn't really taking these corners like fast or uh, efficiently, if that makes sense. Like you can shuffle around, move a lot of positions, but I guess everyone knew how to make a left turn that day. I mean, the left turn, when we made that left turn, I was like, oh, I am out of position. I'm not in an ideal spot. And my coach told me, he said, he said it really well. He said, focus on where you want to be and not where you want to end up. Uh, I knew where I wanted to end, obviously, which was get there and get to a podium. But it would be better to know where you need to be. So race your race as where you need to be in order to really finish where you really want to end up. So it sounds crazy, but it makes sense. But anyway, coming into the left turn, as you can see here, everyone took it absolutely great. Uh, we carried really good speed into it. And because I was in out of position, there was a massive surge. And let's see how many people we got in front before we hit that turn. Yeah, see, look, God, that's a lot. That's a lot of bodies. So one guy, he he made the right move. But as you see, everyone, everyone took this corner. Great. And I took it on the inside that time. And yeah, we spike up the watts to get back on because now the front group are already gone. And you know what? This is the end of the race. So of course, everything gets kind of, you know, everyone got the anxious, the anxiety going on. And yeah, we're, we're speeding up. Like, well, look at this, 34 miles per hour just to get back on. And it's gonna like literally just like come to a wall and slow down. And that's because the front group is in great position. So uh, John is, yeah, John's over here on the right side, the right front, and we also had Chris on the right front. So Chris kind of protected John a little bit to get John into the right position, and John did a great job of following that wheel. And now I'm over to the right, more of the right side of the road, so I'm just like, I'm not in the ideal spot. Like, I'm literally freaking out. And Rome tells me behind me, he's like, Dobby, get in there, get in there. So now I see like Mike, you have Mike right here, and then you have Darrell on the right. So Mike is on the left. The rails on the right, and, and Rome told me he's like, he's like, time to get in there, keep it real tight, and stay to the left. And I knew that, and I've seen on other videos, you, you go on the right side of the road. If you're in the right, and towards like the position that I'm in, middle, your race is done. You you're not sprinting for anything. Just let it go. And it seems like with the Calhoun race, it is a hundred percent always like that. So. I saw myself kind of like I stay in the middle of the road a little bit and I knew that I needed to be beside Mike because Mike is in an absolute prime position when we're able to open up and sprint. Now here's the controversy. You see the official comes up. They didn't tell us when we could take the whole road for the whole road for the sprint. They didn't let us know where the sprint zone was. And when I posted this video on Instagram, the official did reach out and said, there might be some disqualifications because everyone sprinted outside the sprint zone, but no one knew where the sprint zone was. So they had to take that one on the chin. It is what it is. Uh, but anyway, Mac Grayson was in the first over that line and I'm not gonna play any figures, y'all can see the video. Um, but I'm like yelling at Mike. I'm like, Mike, this is it. Like open the door, Mike. Open the door, my like now it's kind of like a thing in our group rod. But we're coming around this corner and I know like the start finish line is there. I was like, open the door, oh, Mike. Up, open the door, Mike. I'm getting oh, ready and I'm getting set up. Door, and I was just like, I don't know open how door, I'm gonna make Mike. this work. Go There's left. so many go people left. in front. Go, go, go. And I just thought the race is done, but I just had to make the best of it. I wish I had Rome follow open me, but Rome was in a bad spot. So Mike takes off. And then I had this guy right here on the left side of me, and I just told I just shut the door on him. I just locked it. I was like, you cannot sprint beside me, it's not happening. And this is like the most messiest sprint ever. I did like three different sprints to get up get up ahead. But we made it work to see John. Rolls in for number one. I take four. Let's run it back real quick so you guys can see the mess one more. I mean, I mean that was anyway. But I was very confident in my sprint and Back to what I was talking about with my knee during this sprint, guys. My leg was falling asleep. <laughs> I was so upset. I was just like, I could not put the power down the way I wanted to because I wanted to be safe in this situation. And also being in this position that I was in, 
I knew that I couldn't launch the sprint. This had to be, we're gonna make this up somehow and we're gonna figure it out. And I was trying to leave a sprinter's gap between me and Mike so that I can launch. But once that, that other rider came right beside me, that was out the door. So this was like the sloppiest sprint of all time to me. And I was not happy or satisfied with this sprint, especially when we got when we got to the end, you see my power start to fade. Yeah, that was my leg going to sleep. Like it was cold. My leg was just going to sleep. But anyway, guys, that's Calhoun Road Race. Like I said, we took it 1-4. That was the first race of the season for me. We knocked off the dust and weather should be a lot better from here on out. We got some crits coming. But I appreciate y'all watching, man. I really do. Please remember to hit that like button. Please remember to hit that subscribe button. It really helps out the channel. I appreciate you guys watching. Like I said, the full video will be posted right up after this. But once again, missing on the cyclists. Peace. Mr. Dan.